We're lucky that the Lydia has a well-stocked medical center at its disposal. I suppose it was added during the war. A ship of this size wouldn't normally have a full medical center. Dr. Gebhardt closed the curtains from inside, which was the right thing to do. Who'd want to be greeted by a corpse on the way to breakfast? Dr. Gebhardt locked the door, and until I have good reason, I won't wake him up. Something tells me that he wouldn't be amused. The death of his mistress doesn't really bother Inch. He's only worried about his own future. The death of his mistress... The death of... The Baroness's butler looks like he didn't get much sleep. I would describe his facial expression as... worried. The alcoholic drinks and everything that goes with them is top-notch on this ship. As expected, fresh ice and tongs. Constable Zelda, what is the meaning of this? Are even the police light-fingered nowadays? I need this tool for a criminal investigation. Well then. Why didn't you say so? So, how are you getting along? Can I be of any help? Actually, you could answer a few questions. What was your experience of last night? Oh, terrible. Dinner was fantastic. Everyone was excited about having a pleasant drink under the stars. And then this. You were in the saloon all night long. Yes, the captain. I have to care for my passengers. After you and the others crashed out, I tried to maintain a festive atmosphere. <laughs> but when the alarm it goes off, I lose the battle. <laughs> How was the Baroness? She really surprised me. After she was so unapproachable at the reception and didn't show her face for the entire afternoon, I was afraid she was one of the bulls and bourgeoisie. But then she arrived in the early evening in the best of moods. Already had a few, if you know what I mean. <laughs> Did she say anything to you? She asked me where Legrand's cabin was. I told her, then invited her to come for drinks in the evening. I said it would be great fun. The whole ship will be there, and you don't want to miss that, I told her. And then? She seemed to like the idea. She smiled and then left again for a few minutes. Then she came back and seemed very happy. We drank a toast to life. But at some point she didn't feel well anymore? She overdid it a bit. She suddenly started to swoon and almost spilled her drink. I asked her if she wanted to rest for a moment in her cabin. At first, she didn't want to. She definitely wanted to stay in the saloon. But then she realized that she really did need to lie down. We left together. You know the rest of the story. Did everyone drink from the same bottle of champagne last night? There was more than one bottle, if that's what you mean. There were quite a few guests, and the event lasted several hours. The last bottle of champagne, the one the Baroness drank from, did anyone else drink from it? Certainly. We have reason to believe that the champagne was drugged. Incredible. But wouldn't that have made everyone drowsy? Not if it was only the Baroness's glass that was drugged. I see. That's possible. 
On a night like that, many glasses are filled and emptied. There are several stewards, many guests. No one keeps track of every glass and every bottle. A few drops in a glass? Yes, it's certainly possible. The glass you handed me last night, where did you get it? Ah, I understand. You think your glass was poisoned as well? Did you pour it yourself? No. I saw that you weren't doing so well and wanted to rescue the situation. I took the first available glass and I give it to you. Was it on the table? No, I hurry over to you, together with Dr. Gebhardt, who, of course, he had the glass in his hand. He was looking around for a place to set it down so that he could examine you. I took it from him. And gave it to me. I'd like to apologize for that, but you look so worse for the wear, and I just wanted to comfort you. I didn't think of looking for a new glass for you. Hmm. So the doctor had the drugged glass in his hand. Is it possible to find out where the alarm was set off? I'm afraid not. There are alarms all over the ship. I saw that they're sealed. Can't we just check whether the seal is broken? I'm afraid they're gonna be missing on a lot of alarms. You know, this is an old ship and over the years... So, you're saying that the alarms haven't been regularly maintained? I'll inform the crew immediately, of course. Of course. What can you tell me about the passengers? Oh, not that much, I'm afraid. I wanted to get to know them properly at the reception. In most cases, I just shook hands with them as they boarded the ship. There are a few regulars on board, and after dinner, I had a conversation with Mr. Kreutzer, a talented violinist, and Lady Westmacott. But you already know them from the train. It seems like there aren't that many passengers on board. These bloody airplanes are making our lives miserable. Can you imagine? Grown men prefer to jam themselves into a narrow metal coffins instead of enjoying the fresh sea air on a ship. It's all about saving time. It shouldn't be about how much time it takes to get from A to B, but about how you spend that time. What you experience on the journey, that's what it's about. I'll get back to my investigations now. Ciao, constable. Lady Westmacott seems to be an early bird, but maybe that's just because of all the excitement. I saw a twinkle in her eye on the train. She's eager to be part of a real detective story. Lady Westmacott, already on your f Oh. Constable, don't you think before you speak? I'm sorry, I didn't mean to. No time for chit-chat. What have you found out? We're still working on the case. Actually, I have a couple of questions for you. Please, go ahead. What did you think of our adventure on the train? An extraordinary story, isn't it? I'm glad that you were able to prove yourself, Mr. Zellner. Hopefully not for the last time. I'm glad that everything ended well. I want to thank you sincerely for taking care of Matthew. I can't bear to think about something happening to him. It all worked out in the end. Do you think that the thief from the train and the murderer are the same person? I think the new Raven is capable of anything. Legrand believes there is no new Raven. He thinks that the old one has returned. He said that. Do you think it's possible? Everyone thinks he's dead. As a dramatist, the return of the Raven would certainly be delightful. A legend comes back from the grave for one last job. It's quite romantic. At the same time, though, I'd be disappointed. Why is that? I followed the Raven's career closely. There weren't many burglars with such character and charm. His burglaries were clever and entertaining, but he was sloppy in London. He almost got caught, and I'll never forgive him for the affair on the train. No. Nope. I would much rather that the Raven stayed dead and had nothing to do with the burglary 
or the murder. What do you think? Who is our suspect? Everyone, or almost everyone. Everyone on board is physically capable of shooting someone, but who has the dark desire to take the life of a defenseless person? One cannot read minds. And one should not try. You have to collect evidence, traces, clues. That's what will lead us to the killer. It won't be like a bad crime novel, in which they introduce a new character shortly before the end who, surprise, surprise, is also the murderer. Murderers leave evidence. They're nervous or unnaturally relaxed. They have to adjust constantly. And because of that, they make mistakes. This is your chance, Constable. If you find the mistake, you'll find your murderer. Have you noticed anything related to the murder? Unfortunately not. I was already in my cabin and missed all the commotion. Damnable old age. You're telling me. Oh, you're still young. At my age, you have to expect that you won't experience much anymore. And although I've written about murder so many times, I've never actually witnessed one. How exciting. I doubt everyone is so relaxed in such a situation. Heartless is the word you're searching for, right, Constable? I certainly didn't want the Baroness to be murdered. But if I can't undo it, then I might as well enjoy it. What do you think of Inspector Legrand? He seems to be as skilled as everyone says. Intelligent, focused. I had a chat with him yesterday and he impressed me, but there's something haunted in his eyes. I don't think he ever really stopped hunting the raven. Catching the raven made him famous. What if he actually shot the wrong person? Unjustified fame bothers people, the good ones at least. And do you think he's one of the good ones? Anyone who tries so hard to tear down his own memorial must be honorable. <laughs> or insane. I have to be going, Lady Westmacott. Please keep me informed, Constable Zellner. Of course. Lady Westmacott seems to be an early bird, but maybe that's just because of all the excitement. I saw a twinkle in her eye on the train. She's eager to be part of a real detective story. The gangway is hard to miss. Why did the murderer drop the gun on the gangway? They must have noticed the mistake, even if their back was to the sea. So, why didn't they take the gun and throw it a few meters farther into the sea? I better let the men do their work. If one of them had detected something yesterday, the grate shouldn't be so easy to open. Did the stowaway open it and we caught him in the act? Hmm. No, the pipe is too narrow. He wouldn't fit in there. I guess the cover has been...
The bottle should be full of water. Unless the good constable happens to have a secret alcohol problem. No way to verify that. I can't get the bottle without him noticing. I have to talk to the young fellow right away. Even though he was already under arrest at the time of the shot, he may have noticed something before. And what about the other gunshot? Could the second missing bullet from the murder weapon be stuck down there in one of the wooden crates? If I want to get into the cargo hold, I'll have to get rid of the constable first. He won't let me talk to our young friend. He won't let me talk to our young friend. He respects Legrand far too much to disobey his orders. If I want to get into the cargo hold, I'll have to get rid of the constable first. There may be something else in the vase, but the neck is too narrow to reach in with my hand. Why were the down feathers tossed in the vase? Or is there anything else in there? Could work. There's something in there. Ah. Someone stuffed this in the vase. <whistles> Looks like it's been used to muffle a gunshot. If this isn't an important discovery, I don't know what is. Legrand, here I come. A singed pillowcase is proof that there must have been a second gunshot. In... Spectre? Can't you knock? I... Uh, didn't realize. I'm really... I... I'm not getting anywhere. I'm going to question each passenger individually. Anyone without an airtight alibi will be checked for gunshot residue. But, Inspector... People trip up when you put pressure on them, Constable Zellner. The Raven is nervous. He's changed his methodology and become a murderer. I'll see it in his eyes. After you. But, Inspector Legrand... We have no proof that the Raven and the murderer are the same person. Quite the opposite. The Baroness's message hints at the fact that she knew the murderer and that he'd killed before. You may not know it, but I do. I will catch him with or without your help. I don't believe it. What's gotten into him? Oh, well. It makes no sense to tell him about my theories, if his opinion is already set. I need evidence. Or better yet, the murderer. 
I also need his lab if I'm going to get anywhere. I need to get in there somehow. And I really need to talk to the stowaway. He may have information, and the inspector will just ignore him, since he's too young to be the raven. The ground locked the door. The lock isn't especially secure. If I had a wire or something like that, I could probably pick it. Cybling brand reel from the Baroness's cabin. The tape that came on it and the reel that belongs to the player are both gone. The death of his mistress doesn't... The globe nicely shows that four-fifths of the... Looking out the window, I'd call that an under... Mr. Kreutzer, come on, you have to give me a bit more. You're the only one who was on the train and who has no alibi for last night. As I said, I was in my cabin. Are you sure that it was your cabin and not the Baroness's? Legrand will question the guests, one after another. But if he doesn't get the answers that he wants to hear, it could become unpleasant for them. Lady Westmacott, may I bother you for a moment? By all means, Mr. Zellner. How is the questioning going? Are you implying that I'm an eavesdropper? The inspector is placing a lot of pressure on our dear Mr. Kreutzer. He's the only one who was on the train and who doesn't have an alibi for last night. Perhaps. But him? A murderer? I know people like him. He doesn't have enough backbone to kill someone in cold blood and remain so calm. He'd turn it into a drama and then a farce, drink himself insensible and then, railing at fate, pitch himself into the sea. Forget him. Legrand is wasting his time. Mr. Kreutzer just happens to be a perfect fit for the inspector's image of the raven. Athletic, cultured, moves among the rich and famous. I'll eat his violin if he's the raven or the murderer. I have to be going, Lady Westmacott. Please keep me informed, Constable Zellner. Of course. Mr. Kreutzer clearly feels uneasy. But does Legrand actually think he's the raven? Legrand is absorbed in the interrogation. 
He still seems pretty annoyed. The violinist seems to be bearing the brunt of it. Mmm. English ham and eggs. One advantage on an international trip is the international breakfast. Many of my fellow countrymen think it's outrageous to eat fried bacon, sausages, or, or anything heavy for breakfast. I, on the other hand, think ham and eggs are the only worthwhile contribution the English have made to international cuisine. Excellent. Ah, that's just what I needed. I don't care what Legrand and Dr. Gebhardt say. The blood spot looks strange, and I'd like to take a sample. Better not. The pillowcase is evidence. I shouldn't smear blood on it. <laughs> 